I'm Joy Barrett with the Rural Community Assistance Partnership. In this video, we're going to discuss how to take a good chlorine sample plus methods for analysis. Effective measurement of chlorine residual is essential for protection of public health. The presence of the residual not only provides disinfection, it also serves as an indicator of water quality. Loss of a residual can be an indicator of a water quality problem. Chlorine residual may be measured for compliance or non-compliance purposes. While the analysis will remain the same, how you collect the sample may differ. Compliance samples are typically taken at the entry point to the distribution system. Compliance samples are also taken within the distribution system at the same time and location as total coliform samples. Typically, these samples are taken within a customer's home or at a dedicated sampling tap. The cold water tap is used. The line is flushed until the water is a consistent temperature to ensure that you are drawing water from the main line. Non-compliance samples may be taken to gain information about residual levels in the distribution system. These are typically taken during flushing or investigating customer complaints. The amount of flushing prior to analysis will impact the results. Chlorine residual measurement is best if performed immediately, as chlorine is very reactive. The longer a sample sits, the more likely that the concentration will decrease. Never leave samples out in the direct sunlight, as chlorine will photodegrade quickly. There are a number of methods that can be used for chlorine measurement. Make sure that the method you use has been approved by your primacy agency. Colorimetry using a handheld spectrophotometer is most common, but there are also a number of other EPA-approved methods. Ensure that the methods you use are approved by your primacy agency. For this demonstration, we are using a Hawk Colorimeter 2. We don't endorse this instrument over other brands, and procedures may vary slightly between manufacturers. The method works by adding a chemical called DPD to the sample. If chlorine is present, a pink color will form. A spectrophotometer works by shining light through a sample and measuring the intensity of the light. The pink color blocks light and the decrease in light intensity is measured. It is important to remember that anything that blocks light can impact the result. This can include air bubbles, fingerprints, fog, dust or lint, a scratch in the vial. Let's go through the procedure. There are eight steps. Start the tap and wait for the temperature to stabilize. Collect a 10 milliliter sample in a vial. The 10 milliliter mark is on the vial. Turn on the instrument. Wipe off the vial with a lint-free cloth or chem wipe. Insert the vial, lining up the diamond. I point the diamond directly toward me, but it doesn't matter as long as you line it up consistently. Cover the sample. Press the zero button on the instrument. This zeroes the instrument for your sample and accounts for some interferences in your sample. Add the DPD packet to the sample and swirl. Here's where procedures vary if you are measuring free chlorine or total chlorine. There are different DPD packets for free and total chlorine. Make sure to have the correct packet. For free chlorine, measure the sample within one minute. For total chlorine, you need to wait three to six minutes. Then the procedures are the same. To measure, wipe off the vial, line up the diamond, cover, and click measure. Remember that fingerprints, air bubbles, and fog can change the result. So make sure that you wipe off the vial with a clean, lint-free rag. Note that small interferences may be present. Just because the device has a number doesn't mean that chlorine is present. 
In our trainings using deionized water, no chlorine present, our students have noted residual concentrations ranging from 0.01 to 0.10 milligrams per liter. Recognizing this and identifying a reporting limit for your results is very important to ensure chlorine is present. Finally, you need to periodically check the calibration of your instrument. This can be done using prepared samples or calibration check standards. Requirements vary between states. At a minimum, you should establish your frequency and method for calibration. Keeping records of calibration is essential. In this video, we discussed a common procedure for chlorine measurement. We highly recommend that you consult the procedure for your instrument. Procedures may vary, so when in doubt, follow the documented procedure. For more information about chlorine residual and other topics, visit our website at rcap.org. The Rural Community Assistance Partnership is a national network of nonprofit organizations working to ensure that rural and small communities have access to safe drinking water and sanitary wastewater disposal. If you need help with your community's water or wastewater system, contact your local RCAP office for assistance.